Hi everyone. We've been getting a few questions about the lecture demonstration uh, from the financial instruments lecture, uh, specifically the very final one looking at the hedge. So I thought I'd just have a quick look at it um, and hopefully try to answer some of those questions in and hopefully all in one hit. The first thing is that there have been a couple of typos in the question, which you know, is unfortunate. Um, I did pick them out in the lecture. Uh, it was on the lecture video, uh, but for completeness, I'm going to have a look at them again here. So the first is um, these numbers here. Um, let's see, picking up. Hang on a sec. Um, so when it talks about an agreed rate of one Aussie dollar equals 0 0.9239 US dollars, uh, this is actually incorrect. This number here. Um, should actually be that number. Um, so when it reads one Aussie dollar equals 0 0.9239, it should actually read one Aussie dollar equals 1.0200. The second typo is relates to the second typo relates to the columns on the forward contract, and this is just I got it round the wrong way um, when I was typing it up. This is not the receivable, this is the payable, and this is not the payable, this is the receivable. Uh, again, I picked that up in the lecture, but it is something to be aware of. Okay, now that we've dealt with the typos, it's a good idea to have a look at, I mean, I, I would like to have a look at what's actually going on with what the payable represents and what the receivable represents. Now, we'll kind of start backwards first, which is what the fair value is. Now, the fair value is literally the difference between the payable, I should say, so the payable and the receivable. If the receivable, which is an asset, is greater than the payable, which it is in every single case, um, so I'll draw then the fair value will be positive and what we will have is an asset on the books because you're allowed to set these things off and so instead of showing a payable, so a liability of 98,000 and a receivable of 105,000 you just simply show the net difference which is 7,224 and so on and so on. Um, to the extent that those change you pick up the changes and you increase or decrease the asset um, as to whether or not the other side of that entry goes to profit or loss or to OCI depends on the nature of the hedge, which we're not going to look at right now. What we're interested in is why these numbers stay the same and why these numbers change. And the best way to have a look at that is to draw up a timeline. Not very straight, but serves our purpose. So we have the 1st of May, the 31st of May, the 30th of June, and the 30th of July. So it's at this point we enter into the hedge, and it's at this point that the hedge gets closed out. Or I should say, even if it's not a hedge, just the position gets closed out. And what we have is, is a buy position. So this company has entered into a contract where in three months time they're going to pay Australian dollars and they're going to receive US dollars and they have locked that price in so they know how much Aussie dollars they're going to pay and that is based on the forward rate at which they set it up so the forward rate on the date in which they set it up is 1.0200 so you take $100,000 uh, US, convert that into Australian, and we end up with 98,039. So that's how much they're going to pay. And how much they're going to pay is a payable. So it's a liability. And what they're going to receive, and this is where a lot of the problems lie, what they're going to receive is 100,000 US and that doesn't change. The actual what they're going to receive doesn't change over the intervening time periods. What does change though is the value if 
I can spell correctly, the value in AUD. So $100,000, remember this is future $100,000. This is $100,000 at this point in time. We're over here to start with. And at this point in time, the forward rate is 1.0200. So what we're gonna be, the value of what we're receiving is also done at 1.0200, which means we end up with nothing here. When we move along to this point, We've still locked in the rate, so this doesn't move. However, this has. So now the rate is 0 0.9500, and that works out to be 105.263. So again, what you're getting is still future US currency. You're still getting, at this point in time, $100,000 US. It's just the Australian dollar value today has changed. And this process keeps repeating. We get to here, the rate changes again, down to 0 0.91, and the receivable changes once again, until we get to this point in time, and the forward rate, in this case it matches up perfectly, in reality it may not match up exactly, but the forward rate matches up with the spot rate because it's not really future currency anymore. You're at this point, the spot rate of US dollars at that point is 9239. The forward rate, well, it's not really in, in the future anymore, it's you're there now, is 0.9239. So, in summary, this stays the same because this is the rate that you've locked in and that's what you're going to pay regardless of what the fluctuations in the underlying prices are. The receivable, that does change because, not because what you're receiving changes, but the value of what you're receiving changes. Hopefully that's helped, and if you've got any more questions on it, uh, please feel free to get in touch with me.